What's up, y'all? It's Andy Dutton, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 197 of the True to Size podcast. This guy said first time, and then all of a sudden, once the recording starts, Expert, bro. he's just a natural. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a natural. <laughs> What's going on, everyone, and welcome to True Two Size. We are a weekly podcast centered around the wild world of sneakers. I will be your host today. My name is Lawrence Hopkins, and I am joined by the one half of the rest of the quarantine team at Canada Got Soul, Mr. Alvin Martinez. <laughs> what up, y'all? Mr. Joel Hernandez could not be here this week. He had a family emergency. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with Joel and his family. Um, much love to you. But we did... However, do our very best to find a replacement for him. We, <laughs> we failed miserably, ours. but we did find someone else to come on the podcast. Uh, so, without further ado, he'll take you to school, and I mean that in the classroom and on the court. He'd be in the summer games if taking sneaker photos was an Olympic sport. Ooh. He took a break from grading Ooh, okay. papers to hang out with us this week. His students know him as Mr. Dutton, but the streets know him as 80 Sneaks. Hey. <laughs> hey thank you that's quite an introduction appreciate that glad i could be your uh your your fill-in today i appreciate you coming out andy uh i taught eminem everything that he knows so i'm glad that you, <laughs> glad that you noticed the skills for anybody unfamiliar like i said uh andy's instagram handle is ad sneaks on instagram um i think only recently relatively recently joined instagram in the first place right like it's only been what a year you said yeah, a year since I started, like, I've been on there in my personal, but that yeah. one's just, you know, I never really do much there. But the sneaker one, yeah, I started like a year ago, just, just doing that thing. So a year it's been ago. crazy. He's the guy who sticks shoes to walls and takes cool pictures <laughs> of them. He's that guy. For anybody unfamiliar, you're now caught up. Um, so <laughs> before we get into it and with Andy, uh, we've got a great show with you, for you guys this week. We're getting things started uh, with a spicy fire on question from a new contributor um, to the segment. And I know that Alvin's going to love this question. Then we've got some news about Nike pulling out of more retailers. But this one's like the most surprising probably ever. Um, after that, we're going to get into things with Andy, starting with a round of 20 one questions then we'll get to know what got him into sneakers and we'll touch on everything from sneaker photography to being a sneaker loving teacher to being a sneaker loving father lots of things to talk about with andy but first fill in for joel alvin fire round you didn't even do the whoosh or anything or it's been too long bro like i just (laughs) i got nervous i was like i forgot (laughs) that was so (laughs) bad i was like I was like, should I do an echo? Fire, fire, round, round, round. But I can't. So I got nervous. Really, really sorry, bad, man. I'll make Joel, it up to you next week. Joel is pissed right now. <laughs> um, yes, the fire <laughs> round. We like to start every show with a quick hitting question from you, our listeners. And this week's question comes from, like I said, a new uh, a new contributor to the fire round. His name is Ian Russell. His Instagram handle is. I'm assuming I got this right. You know how Instagram is like all lowercase, so it's hard to yeah. read. Like when. Oh, it's rough. Intended words are ending and another one is beginning. So I think it's supposed to say ginger tech no Viking. That just doesn't make any sense. So I don't know <laughs> True. if that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> please, we're going to call him Ian. Ian, if that's, if that's wrong, please let me know. Um, that's the best that I could take out of it. Anyways, he says, what's one shoe that you hate that everyone else loves and you just can't figure out why? He says, I'm a Northern English guy. He's from the city of Leeds. I have no idea where that is. Apparently in Northern England. Um, and he says, basketball has never been a big thing here. So all Jordans suck for me, but the suckiest are the Air Jordan 11s. Horrendous shoe, patent leather should stay on ballroom dance floors or pimp shoes from the 70s. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Um, so Damn, yeah, just basically bro. a sneaker that everyone seems to like and you are just like not down with. And I knew that I have a feeling that Alvin's going to like this one because Alvin hates a lot of things. But uh, <laughs> I'll go first while you guys think of, of an answer. And for me, I think it's got to be the Yeezy slide for me. I know it's kind of like Dude. a cheap answer because it's not necessarily a shoe, but people wear them as shoes. So like all the time. Yeah. I can't get down with the Yeezy slide. I'm a big slide. Love slides. Love house shoes. Like love all that. But for some reason, the Yeezy slide is just so strange to me. I don't get it. it I got a pair on confirmed the other day, just like entered on a whim. They're like a hundred dollars Canadian. And I'm like, 
Man, the margin on an, a Yeezy slide has to be the best thing in the world for Adidas because there's no Honestly. way that costs more than five dollars to make, and they just charge me a hundred bucks for it. So I saw oh, them yeah. at the convenience store for like twenty five bucks. Um, exactly, <laughs> like it's insane. It's insane. So I'm gonna go with the Yeezy slide, and I don't know if that's a cop out answer or not, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna start there. And uh, Alvin, what what are you thinking? Shoe that n- everyone seems to like, but you hate. Yeah, let's stick to one. Let's just stick to one. <laughs> I don't. It's kind of hard to pick, but I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna stay on brand and go with the dinosaur looking feet Yeezys. <laughs> I don't even know what they're called. The to be fo- are you talking about the like, foam <laughs> runner? Sure. Is that what they're called? <laughs> the th- I'm the, thinking the ones that look like a fossil. You know, like it looks like ref- a skeleton. Oh yeah, definitely like, foam runners. You're definitely referring right. to the foam runner. Yes. Um, I don't know why people think they're so cool, because one, it's like. I don't feel like the price is just justified for what you get. Those are also like a hundred bucks, hundred ten Canadian. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, dude, like again, I saw those as well at the convenience store for like fifteen bucks. I think <laughs> you got a good convenience store, bro. I gotta come to your. End. Yeah, man, where's that? Convenience store? <laughs> hey, listen, let me know your sizes. I'll hook you guys up. I'll send them for free because it's so. <laughs> All my convenience stores are like do rags. <laughs> just send me a send me a Mountain Dew with it too. So, you know, done, bro. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, I don't know. It, people have been rocking them as if they look really good with like just like streetwear. I don't see it. Like, I'm not trying to dish you, or it's just not my style, I guess. But like, you look like you have like fossils on your foot. <laughs> last time I checked, that wasn't really the most appealing thing, at least for me, anyway. Maybe because I'm just old school and I like actual sneakers, but I don't know. Those dinosaur shoes, man. Dinosaur Home shoes. runners or whatever. Just call them dinosaur you shoes. You sound really old saying those dinosaur <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Thank you. Those dinosaurs. <laughs> those Thank dinosaur you. shoes. All right, Andy. I know you, you said you agreed with me with the, the Yeezy slide, but uh, you got anything else? Yeah, I got I got one I'm thinking of. But like the both you said, like, yeah, the slides. Slides are supposed to be like, I don't know, those look like platform yeah, slides. They're so thick. Like the soles yeah. are so thick. Like, how is that how's that comfortable? Like, I don't know. I mean, the cushion's probably great, but like just no, slides easy on, easy off. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. And then the foam runners, like those, I don't know how that part like on the top of the foot yeah. stays on your foot. It looks like you have like you know, like a couple inches of room between the top of your foot and the shoe. It's like, how's that stay on? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand those things. We all sound but... very old. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> um, but for me, like, so I, I like, I like plenty of Yeezys. Um, so I'm going to leave them alone for a second. <laughs> but I would have to say, like, everyone loves playing ball or loves Kyrie's and I don't like them at all. Mm, really? Really, I don't. Like I tried them and they don't fit my foot well and you know it's like okay, maybe I'll break them in a little bit and get the get the feel down a little bit, but like that happened they were broken in, but you know, like traction's okay, like court feel I don't think was there. Like everyone's talking about Kyrie's like they're the second coming of Kobe's, right? Like the best mm-hmm. hoop shoe and I I just can't I don't know. I don't really think they're worth the hype. And I don't really see what people see in Kyrie's for hooping. Damn. Confirmed. Andy thinks he's better than Kyrie Irving at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all. Heard it here first. That's all I took from that. Is he said, oh, those are good enough for you? Mm, not quite for me. Sorry. Not for me. Sorry, Kyrie. <laughs> Ooh, awkward. <Yeah. laughs> Well, thank you, uh, Ginger Techno Viking, for the question. <laughs> um, if, if that is the actual Instagram name, please give us the background because there's got to be that seems like four random words that like you typed into Google and it was like, give me four random words. And that's what it gave you. Um, please let us know the inspiration behind that name. I would love to know if you would like to submit a question for the fra- fire round and have us answer it on the pod, please shoot us a message on Instagram or email us at Canada got soul on gmail.com. Next up the CGS picks each week. We all pick an upcoming sneaker to analyze, dissect and give our thoughts on. Then we decide if it's poop scoop, whoop de whoop or Alvin's trademark phrase, Super cute, bruv. Super. Oh, the bruv is back. Love it. It's back. The, the bruv is back. We got lots of rave reviews for your bruvs last week, Alvin. Oh, people, man. people loved all the bruvs. The bruvs love the bruvs. I must say. Um, I'm gonna go first because that's what we do. And my pick this week is uh, giving me a ton of nostalgia, and I'm kind of excited about them actually getting an official release. And that is the LeBron Nine Low in the LeBronald Palmer mm. colorway. Yeah. So these 
originally came out as like a sample in 2012 and there was like the lebron palmer the reverse lebron palmer and they were just like really cool obviously based on the arnold palmer iced tea um i think the insole on the sample at least featured oh it does on these ones too uh features like a literal glass of iced tea which is really cool um the whole upper is like tropical with palm leaves and it's just like a really really fun look and they're apparently unofficially officially seeing a retail release in 2022 official images have come out so it seems like they're pretty close on the horizon somewhere and yeah i'm pretty excited um i don't know if i'm actually gonna buy a pair it's one of those like thank goodness they're actually coming out but i in 2022 me is not like gonna actually wear them so i'm not gonna spend my money on them (laughs) but like Really excited because, again, like the nostalgic 20-year-old in me is like, oh, yeah, I am very excited that those are coming out officially, um, even though, again, I'm not going to actually buy them. It's like these, the Watch the Throne, LeBron 9s, a bunch of shoes that, like, thank goodness they're all coming out officially, but (laughs) I'm good just observing from afar. Uh, So, yeah, stay tuned. It seems like, again, they're really close to coming out officially, just no official release date as of yet. Um, Alvin, what do you got for us this week? I have the staying on brand with the month. It's the Nike Air Max One Air Max Day around the globe, or it's probably not even called that to be honest. So I apologize. <laughs> um, however, this is the uh, it's it's dope, man. It's it's got it's predominantly like I would say a UNC blue, um, with some I guess royal blue accents. The mesh on the toe box is like a white. Uh, materials look pretty good. Look, it's looking like it's predominantly leather with some mesh on there. Uh, it's got 326 on the lace as opposed to the tongue. Oh. Um, yeah, these are cute, man. Like, I don't know if I can cop these just because I feel like everything Air Max in the month of March is going to sell out like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, these are set to drop Air Max Day, uh, hopefully. But yeah, that mi- there's a mini swoosh too, and I'm a sucker for mini swoosh. So it's like, if if these are available, I I will definitely try to purchase. Um, just because, man, that mini swoosh just it does it for me. So there must and be plus, two, a, right? There's a bunch, I believe. Because Joel Cause spoke that of that white one? one last week. Yeah, the white and yeah. silver iridescent looking one with the 326 yeah. on the tongue, and there's this yeah. pair. Yeah, those ones look crazy. Yeah, yeah, those ones are crazy too. Um. And then there's another, there's like that Wabi Sabi pair, which is like green and also has a mini swoosh on there. Oh I think. gosh. And then there's that big bubble with that they're trying to release with the OG colorway, mm. the white and red as well. Yeah. So I don't know. March is definitely a dangerous month, uh, especially for any of fellow Air Max heads out there. And uh, yeah, no, these are, these are dope, man. Um, I'm down for these. These would be a dope summer shoe too. So I'm going to say super cute for now, just because. I don't know, man. I've had no luck recently, so. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Well, and uh, along that same note, all three concepts Air Max ones are coming out this month as well, which is like. Yeah. The other one's coming out on 12th. The, one that the next like, one is, yeah, yeah, next Saturday. Yeah, yeah. a week later. Oh, I took a big, a fat, bro. stupid L last week on those ones. You and me both, yeah. I was trying for a friend of the show, uh, Kellen, Chef Kreisel, also a Soul Savvy member, because I didn't necessarily care for them, but like. Man, those things flew. They went quick. Like really fast. Like things don't guy, usually yeah. sell that fast. Yeah. No. Especially on like well, they they don't have all the stock, right? Like sneakers has some. Mm-hmm. Aren't they still doing a sneakers release? Yeah, for yeah. that first one. Yeah, I had like a four minute queue. I was like, okay, I have a pretty good chance still. Chance. And then like <laughs> two two minutes in, sold yep. out. I'm like, oh, okay, dude. <laughs> And that wasn't even, uh, at least in my opinion, that one isn't the nicest one. I feel like that's the, the least nice. I, I'm with you. Yeah, like the sabotage looking pair with the camo on it is mm-hmm. crazy. That one looks great. That's that's Which the one I weekend. like the most. Yeah. yeah, and then the yeah. full paisley one is is something I'd mess with too. But those are the ones knows, I man? want. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I again. I love Chef Creasel. I'm glad I took the L on the pair that I don't want for myself. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. I'm gonna try for him again this weekend on the desert camo or the tire camo one, but yeah, super pumped for that paisley pair. But anyways, yeah, back to the gist. A lot of Air Maxes this month, which is on brand. Yeah. Duh. Um, Andy, what do you got for us? Uh, so I got one that's a little bit further down the road. Um, 
So Nike or Jordan brands kind of, you know, pushing the OGs this holiday season with the Chicago Jordan ones. Hopefully the remastered one doesn't look like they said vintage. Hopefully it doesn't look like it's, you know, someone peed on the midsole vintage. Yeah, we have so little faith now. I'm so like, yeah, I'm scared to be excited but, for those. Yeah, I am too. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, cautiously optimistic there. Yeah. But the one that I'm curious to see how it goes is the the OG2 Chicago's mm. that are supposed oh, to yeah. be coming out. Because, uh, you know, I, I like twos. And every time I wear a pair of twos, at least to school with, you know, those middle school hype beasts all around. <laughs> uh, they're like, Dutton, why are you wearing bowling shoes? So, like, Oof. you know, I was like, okay. Damn. I know. Damn. They, they're br- They're brutal. Um, but I'm curious to see the reception of the OG colorway because you got a lot of collaborations. You know, you had the yeah. off whites last year. You got the unions. You got Alma Manye doing theirs, yep. and a few more this year. So it'll be interesting to see what the reception is for the the OG one. Yeah, and I think I saw a price point was like two twenty five. Ooh, USD. which I'm like, damn, yeah, yeah USD. USD. I was wow, like, oh, like three hundred Canadian. Yeah, you know, like, that's yeah deep. for some twos. Like, I, I mean, twos are good, but I'm like. That's that's pretty high, and they're not yeah. made in Italy either. I know that's the thing because, like the the OG, like way back in the day, yeah. ones were Italy. So I doubt these are going to be anywhere close to that. But who knows? We'll we'll see what happens with those ones. I told a good friend of the show, Mister Sean Collard, that uh, because they're not made in Italy, I will not be purchasing the shoe. Mm. I am uh, <laughs> very much a Jordan Two purist. Everybody knows this about me, so. I will be yeah. not buying the Jordan 2 <laughs> Chicago in the holiday season based on principle alone because how dare Jordan Brand not manufacture these in Italy I feel you during, during a global <laughs> pandemic. How dare they <laughs> not outsource their factories to produce a Jordan 2? Just, man, I am so personally offended. <laughs> absolutely awful anyways I, I could go on a rant about the jordan 2 all day me and sean collard share that in common as well but i will move on <laughs> next up this week in kicks this is the part of the show where we discuss the current headlines and happenings in the world of sneakers and as mentioned at the top nike is continuing to focus on direct to consumer sales um it's not any new news that nike has been putting a massive focus on direct to consumer sales uh in the last couple of years we've spoken a bunch of times about them pulling out of smaller boutiques there was news like a couple months ago where they sent out letters to some other smaller accounts saying like, hey, you're actually not getting any shoes this year. This is basically the gist of the uh, letters, which is insane. Um, but this new one that just came out about last week is kind of crazy and it's sending like shockwaves kind of through everywhere and everyone's kind of like alarmed a little bit, me included. And that's uh, it was disclosed last week that Nike would be heavily scaling back their account with one of North America's, I think possibly the world's biggest shoe retailers, Foot Locker. So they're not complete. So news official initially broke saying, oh, they're completely pulling out of Foot Locker. And then that was said to not be the actual case. They're just scaling back a ton in Foot Locker, which is, again, Foot Locker's sales in 2021, 70% of that was Nike. So for them to be scaling back is like massive. Um, Obviously, Foot Locker said that they're going to try and diversify, you know, sell more Puma, sell more Adidas and everything. But that's a massive void to fill. 70% is like no joke. Like that's, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like better than my grades in school. So like, that's like a lot. (laughs) Um, but sorry, we got a teacher here. Um, (laughs) so they also said, they also said that, um, going forward that no single vendor will have more than 55%. That's more like my percentage 55, no more than 55% (laughs) of total sales through the, the, the retailer. So like, Massive scale back. They're going to have like small percentages. Yeah. Um, Following that news, Full Locker stock immediately fell by 30%. 30%. Oh, my. That's a lot of, again, much closer to my grade school average. 30%. That's a (laughs) lot. Like a third? That's huge. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's like really bad. Um, It's so there's, there's obviously two sides to the coin here. One, if you're Foot Locker, it was obviously a mistake to have so much stake in a brand that you don't own. Like you should have been more diverse from the beginning. You Mm -hmm. would think like you don't want to rely 70% of your business relies on one brand. 
Like that's a big chunk. And two, it's like, obviously the flip side is like, Nike's like on a slippery slope here where they're pulling out of like foot, not pulling out, but scaling back with foot locker. Like the one place you would think that like, yeah, they're fine. Like, I don't know. It's scary, especially as like a Canadian. I'm sure in the States it might feel a little bit different because like the sneakers app is a lot better in the States. Nike.com gets a lot more stock. There's a lot more like boutiques to go around. And in Canada, it's like Foot Locker is huge for that. Like there's yeah. not a lot of other places other than Foot Locker, like the Nike Canada sneakers, whatever you want to call it is terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> I don't even know anybody who wakes up for 6 a.m. to try and get their drops anymore. <laughs> like it's just awful. So like, yeah, as a Canadian, it's terrifying. Um, definitely interested to hear your thoughts, Andy, because you are the resident American right now. But uh, you think this is going to be a big thing? Like, it's scary to me. Well, it's. I think it's. it's it makes me wonder what they're going to do. Like, I know they're going to try to send them to other boutiques and stuff like that. But like, how much stock can those boutiques like handle? Kind yeah. of thing, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know if they'll collectively be able to move as much as Foot Locker was doing. And then, I mean, you'd say sneakers sucks in Canada. It sucks here too. I haven't been on sneakers in like six months. So, and I think it was for like some GR Air Forces that my wife wanted, but um, yeah. So I, I don't know what they're going to do. Um, I know, I think I read somewhere recently too, that sneakers, I mean, they change over who's in charge of sneakers at Nike all the mm-hmm. time anyway. So I read that someone else was kind of taking over control of that. So maybe they're going to be, you know, bolstering up the sneakers platform a little bit Mm -hmm. making that a little bit more fair and equitable but i mean it's all hearsay but i think that's i don't know i i never really had much success with foot locker i know a lot of people do yeah i mean i see people i got friends that cop through foot locker all the time like every single week every drop they cop through foot locker so damn must be nice i don't know i I know what are those like (laughs) 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 <laughs> yeah it's just like scary because again they say they want to do direct to consumer so they want to sell it themselves but again as a canadian there's like 10 fucking nike stores in the entire country maybe um wow. and the stock that we do get online is shared with europe so we don't even have our own mm-hmm. um like nike the nike.ca shares with nike uk or nike europe or netherlands or whatever the hell it is like it's 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 weird as a Canadian to think like, okay, if you can't go to Foot Locker, again, for us, like as sneakerheads, we're going to find a way, obviously. That's what we do. But so as like a regular yeah. consumer who's like walking through the mall and you're like, I want a pair of 270s and you walk into Foot Locker and they're like, no, sorry, you can have these Puma suede's. Like, it's just like, it's as a regular consumer, it's like, where do you go after that? I just, it's it's scary, especially as a Canadian. I, I think there's more Nike presence in brick and mortar in the states i could be wrong i don't know how many there are in utah um yeah there's like none other than Foot Locker. So. yeah it's scary times man alvin remember working at yeah. Foot Locker? how many man how how many non-nike sales were there a day <laughs> like <laughs> not a, a day, lot we barely we barely had non-nike sneakers on the walls bro. yeah like, what are the walls gonna even look like like it was literally 90 percent nike and then if even if we like I don't know, sold out of a pair, we'd still look for other Nike pairs to replace exactly. it. Exactly. You know I mean? Like yeah. it would never be replaced with like an Adidas or a Puma. It would be like replaced with Nike. Yeah, like you don't come in there. looking for like an Air Force and then they end up leaving with like a again like a Puma suede. No knock on Puma. We love Puma. You don't leave with like a Puma suede when you came in for an Air Force. It's just not yeah, no. not, not, not what happens. Yeah. Interesting times. Interesting times indeed. Maybe who knows? Maybe Canada will get more Nike stores and Utah mm-hmm. will also get more Nike stores. That's all <laughs> That's all we can wish for. Um, <laughs> next up, previously in Kicks, this is the part of the show where we review our latest pickups and recap the latest happenings in our sneaker lives. Um, it was a short week because I believe we recorded later in the week last week. So I'm not sure if Alvin, if you have anything to report or not, but uh, anything on your end, sir? Uh, yeah. So the, the big bro, Chris. Oh, yeah. Christopher Chu, aka at Christopher Chu, um, on his way home from visiting me or us or slash didn't, didn't visit or me or whatever. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> um, he hit me up like as he was like on the road. He's like, "Yo, you wanted those uh, OG like RS Dreamers, right, from Puma?" And I'm like, "Yeah, dude, like huge J Cole fan. Like obviously, like if I get the OG pair, right, I'm I'm down." And then um, he's like, "Yo, uh, I'm at the Kingston outlet." And they're like twenty five bucks. I'm like, 
I'm like, yo, I can't even make it there. Like, it's in Kingston. It's like at least two hours away. He's like, no, dummy, I'm going to get them for you. <laughs> and just send me the money. And I was like, done, bro. And then he copped them for me and I sent him the money. And then he sends me back the money. He's like, yo, if I knew it was your birthday, I wouldn't have told you anything. And then he sends me back the money. And then, so yeah, they came in today and like, man, I love that fucking shoe. That Puma RS Dreamer, like their original colorway that came out with the black, yep. yellow, blue. And they're low cut, right? Red or whatever. Yeah. And they're lows. Are you going to hoop in it? Um, I'm going to try. Now that I have two pairs, mm. I'm probably going to keep the OG colorway like on ice for a bit um, right. and then rock the other ones. But yeah, I'm definitely going to try to hoop in them, see how I like them. Uh, they look narrow, though. And with my wide foot, I'm kind of like hesitant, but obviously I'll still try. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm super amped to have those in the in the arsenal. Damn, Chris. Oh, that's it. Chris, you didn't call me and ask if I wanted a pair of RS streamers, <laughs> Chris. Whatever. I don't, so it's fine. But what if I did? Um, thanks for the offer. Yeah, thanks for the offer that I didn't get to, a chance to decline. <laughs> so, yeah, nothing for me. I have a p- couple potential things coming in in the next little while. But as we do, I don't want to jinx it. And then FedEx steals it. So oh, I uh, gosh, yeah. won't say anything <laughs> until it is in my hands, in my Max. stacks. Smart, so, smart, so smart. Nothing for me. Andy, anything notable in the last uh, couple of weeks for you? Um, yeah, so I got I got a couple. Um, so the ones, the, the dunks, the SB dunk highs that raffled. I think they were the passport ones. Yeah, I have yeah. a like, little dude on the back looking yep. like the Nike swoosh is a shovel. I mean... SB dunks are hard to get anyway. I feel like you have to have insane raffle luck to be able to even yeah. come close or, you know, like those ones on Supreme where the whole slidey thing was just being <laughs> stupid. Like, <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. Yeah. We, you but and I already aired those... our grievances about that. <laughs> we did. We did. We did. That, that really sucked. So, um, but that's, that's Supreme. I mean, the yeah. website was built in like 1995. So it was so never changed. Good. No, not at all. <laughs> Never mind. I was gonna say I'm pulling up Microsoft Paint on Windows 95 <laughs> and the Supreme site. So <laughs> giving them too much credit, if honestly. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, so those uh those passport dunks, um, prices were, were pretty low resale wise. So I put in a low offer and uh and that took so I don't know when it's gonna be here because they just came out. So nice. person probably has to get them in hand before they ship them out. But I'm definitely excited. Uh, to pick those ones up just because I like the kind of the work boot motif that's going on mm-hmm. with it. Colors work really well in that the sole, I don't know what they did with the sole, but it looks like semi translucent in spots, yep. but it's got like kind of like a tortoise shell like mm-hmm. color to it. It's pretty sick. So looking forward to to getting those in hand and seeing what they're like. I like those. They're very uh, beef and broccoli esque with the, yeah. the yeah. brown and the greens. Big fan of those. Great fall shoe. You guys get fall in Utah, right? What's the weather? And I don't know if we, I saw <laughs> oh, you a couple gosh. weeks ago. I don't know if we went over this. Do you guys get like, because I can never tell. I'm not good at American geography. I don't know who's far enough north. Apparently the other day in New York, it was like 75 degrees, which is like warm, like very warm. Yeah. So I just don't understand anything about American weather. <laughs> Do you guys get four seasons in Utah or like one season, two seasons? What's it like? We get, we get four seasons in a day sometimes. I swear. <laughs> oh, no. um, it's so crazy. Uh, like earlier, like last week, it was like high 60s, sunny. I was like, oh, I'm going to wear some shorts. And then like this weekend, it snows and it's in the teens again. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, so spring, spring is, uh, you know, winter trying to make up its mind to leave. And then like in a week, it turns into summer. Yep. So that's usually how that goes. And then fall is you know temperatures are nice it's like summer's dwindling and then all of a sudden you get a snowstorm and there's like 10 inches of snow on the ground so it's like oh okay no fall winter's here (laughs) so we can very (laughs) similar to toronto then actually yeah it's rough man it is rough very similar to toronto okay we can we can commiserate then on on the shitty (laughs) weather because it's not the best um any more pickups for anybody before we move on everybody good yes sir fantastic all right next up thumbs up thumbs down in this part of the show we give our opinion on various sneaker related topics with zero context or discussion all we're allowed to say is thumbs up or thumbs down and this week it's funny we we spoke of air forces a little bit already very much in passing i want to know the the (laughs) most infamous fake air force ever created thumbs up thumbs down to bapes does 
Alvin. Uh, Don't think of what uh, your friends want you to say. No, I'm saying up. up. You're saying up? Yeah. I'm saying down, Andy. Uh, I'm down. Damn. Sorry, Alvin. All right, moving on. Um, I will say sorry. (laughs) Sorry, Calby. Moving on. NSR, not sneaker related. We talk about sneakers a lot. So in this weekly segment, we're going to take 30 seconds out of the show to discuss something completely irrelevant from the world of sneakers. And... We love talking about food. We love talking about food during NSR segments, and uh, this week will be no different. And yes. this one comes like after the food, potentially the best part of a meal, and that's dessert. And I mm. want to know what is the what will we call it? the G dote, the greatest dessert of all time. <laughs> <laughs> What is Godot? the yeah the Godot? What is the Gal Godot? Um, Ooh, good one. <laughs> um, She's my yeah. favorite. I mean, joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that after. Um, <laughs> Alvin, favorite dessert? There's a lot to choose from. You can get super specific if you want. Um, yeah, but yeah. Just favorite. Yeah, yeah, I know you're gonna get super specific. Um, <laughs> favorite dessert. Uh, so my Godot, my go-to dessert every time I'm out is uh, an apple pie, just a warm mm. apple pie with some amazing vanilla ice cream on top. Mm-hmm. And that's it, man. Simple. You ever do the cheese on the apple pie? What? Jeez, what? You ever done what? that? Slice of cheese like, on apple no. pie? Like a like cheddar, cheddar cheese? Or mozzarella? Mm-hmm. Like a nice sharp cheese on the top slice uh, cheese. no i've never done it personally i'm just speaking from people saying oh you don't you don't have cheese on your apple pie and they like look at you like where, you're the crazy one where are they from <laughs> where are these people from Doc? yeah can't right around here buddy right alaska around, right around here bud <laughs> yeah bud jeez i guess i could see apple. maybe like a like a cream cheese because like you know okay. cheesecake yeah that would work that would that'd work. be like i'm down but like slice like sharp cheese cheese uh, i don't know man I don't I'll know, try it. Quite, I'll try like, anything yeah, single level, but like cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Craft single would ruin everything. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know about craft single. You know, like a nice block of cheese. You like a couple of slices, let it melt. I don't know. I don't know. Mm, don't shoot the maybe messenger. A brie. A brie. Wow. I do like a brie or like a cream cheese because then, you know, like, I don't know about like a block of like sharp cheddar cheese or something. Like, I'm just, don't shoot the messenger. We'll see. We'll see. Anybody Next time we all listening. get together. Yeah. We're Anybody listening. When we go visit Utah, we're going to bring apple pie and cheese. <laughs> Facts. Okay. <laughs> you, you bring the pie, I'll get the cheese. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> Deal. <laughs> um, I'm going to go super OG with this. Obviously, greatest dessert of all time. Has stood the test of time, you know, back in medieval times when they were churning it in their little churners. I don't know what they make, whatever you make it in. Ice cream is the answer. Ice cream is just absolutely fantastic. To be specific, and this is probably a super hot take, mint chocolate chip ice cream. Big, oh no. big <laughs> mint chocolate chip ice cream fan. Um, any other time except for when I'm at sushi. And then Ooh. at sushi, it's a couple Cream little tea. scoops of vanilla ice cream. For some reason, when you go to all-you-can-eat sushi, you can be literally about to vomit from all the sushi you <laughs> ate. And when they come around, Always they say, do. do you guys want dessert? I'm like, hell yeah, give me two scoops of vanilla. Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> just scoops like, of yeah. ice. It's just all of a sudden, I have so much room in my stomach for ice cream. Um, so yeah, ice cream, any time of the day. If I get fast food, the ice cream gets eaten first. Like, it's just... Man, I don't know if that's a hot take either. You go to McDonald's, you get like a McFlurry and a meal. McFlurry first. first. Eat it yeah. first. Or else it melts. Yeah, of course. Okay. Turns into a Exactly. Yeah, I got it's you. It's a safe place. Safe space. I like it. Safe Very space. Good. <laughs> okay. Or scared. or even get your fries. Get your fries Ooh, and you dip, dip that it. in the McFlurry. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that's the good yeah. stuff. Okay. Now we're talking. Let's just we're do all on the same page. page. <laughs> yeah, facts, bro. <laughs> yeah, and cheese and apple pie too, right, guys? I got to go. Had it for a second. Um, <laughs> Andy, the your favorite dessert, the greatest dessert of all time. The Godot. The Godot. The Godot. Um, I'm a big peanut butter fan. Oh. Uh, so I would have to say, like, okay, there's two kinds. There's peanut butter cookies, but there's the crusty peanut butter cookies mm-hmm. that are garbage. Those are disgusting. <laughs> 
Um, but the ones that are just like soft, you know, yes. those ones are, and especially if they're warm, those are Ooh. just so Ooh. good. And uh, I may or may not eat those in bigger bites than I should so that I can <laughs> eat more of them in any given moment. But they're yeah. so good. They're so oh. good. And then, uh, you know, I've tried it with a little bit of ice cream on it, a little bit say, of vanilla. Yeah. And and it's really good that way. A warm yep. peanut butter cookie with some vanilla ice cream. Ooh. It's it's really good. Dangerous. I am starving. Um <sighs> Yes. Yes to all of that. I like that you specified the specific kind of peanut butter cookie as well, because the soft ones, yeah. it's basically like you're biting into like battery peanut butter. Like it's just like exactly. soft so and like, good. Mm, oh, yeah. mm, man, mm. yeah, this is like watching it's, it's the food good. network. Like you just watch the food <laughs> network and you get really hungry. You just talk about. And then you, then you door dash something like in the exactly. middle of you exactly. know, watching. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> exactly. You just look for the nearest thing that's similar to what you're watching. Um, that was definitely more than 30 seconds, but more than worth it. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next up, EEE errors, edits, and e-messages. We are pretty smart guys, but from time to time we make mistakes. So if you catch us slipping, hit us in the DM and we'll let the world know that we goofed. This one also comes care of ginger techno viking oh, shit. and i know and, <laughs> and, and he says um the saucony feature shadow 6000 app re- actually represents the five thousand dollar poker chip not the one thousand dollar poker chip as we stated last cool. week he also said he loves the pod for him it's the real friendship dynamic that appeals it feels genuine and real and you've had me laughing out loud at times keep it up thank you ginger techno viking hopefully yes. we have not turned you off of our podcast because we don't <laughs> understand your Instagram name. <laughs> and I'm glad we were able to pretend like we're friends for 197 episodes. That's also a huge, <laughs> huge win for us. So I'm very happy with that. But anyways, without further ado, the moment everyone has been waiting for time to get into it with our boy, Andy from Utah, the teacher, the basketball coach, the sneaker photographer, the guy with non Ikea shelving, um we're gonna start (laughs) we're gonna start with a round of 21 questions andy this is super easy you're not gonna do very well um 21 questions like your own personal fire round just first answer that comes to your head just kind of get to know you um just some quick hitting stuff all right are you ready ready all right question number one air or boost uh air question number two crew socks or no shows Crew. Question number three, red or blue? Blue. Question number four, pineapple on pizza? Uh, hell no. Damn, I, You know what? I had a feeling when you didn't like <laughs> mint chocolate chip ice cream. Or cheese gonna, on your pineapple. Or, 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 <laughs> or cheese on my apple pie. <laughs> or cheese Dude. on your pineapple. That there was going to be an issue, and I knew it. it was, <laughs> that's just not good. We'll have a talk about that after. Question number five, original boxes or drop fronts? Uh, draw fronts. Question number six, glow in the dark or 3M? Glow in the dark. Question number seven, Air Force or Dunk? Dunks. Question number eight, favorite brand that isn't Nike or Jordan? New Balance. Question number nine, what city are the Niagara Falls located in? No, it's, it's not on the border. That's like... The Canadian no one. That... The Canadian Niagara uh, Falls. <laughs> uh, in the city of Niagara. I have no idea. I don't know that part of the, the country. So. It is the city of Niagara Falls. You almost had it. Yes. The city's name is also Niagara Falls. Question number 10. Perfect. Most comfortable shoe that you own? Ooh. Uh, New Balance 2002R. Question number 11. Who is the president of Canada? Uh... I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> the Prime Minister of Canada is Justin Trudeau. Trick question. You got both of them wrong. Question number 12. <laughs> Who is the most influential person in sneakers right now? It can't be you. Sorry, yeah, bro. Other than, other than uh, yourself or me or Alvin. <laughs> Somebody else. Uh, I would say uh, Tyler Monster. Oh, nice. Very good answer. Question number... 13. Can you name four provinces in Canada? Uh, Alberta, BC, Quebec, uh, and then shoot. You're on a roll. Uh, yeah. 
damn, those are the only ones that I know right now. I, I guarantee I know the fourth one if you say it. Where's Toronto located? In the east. <laughs> <laughs> correct. Eastern Canada is a province. Yes, correct. <laughs> Oh, dude, I can't remember. The I answer, can't remember. The answer we're looking for would be Ontario, the province of Ontario. Yeah. Yes. You, you knew that. that. I know. You knew that. I know. Question Question number 14. <laughs> what are three sneaker heading essentials? Ooh, um, I would say some shoe trees, mm. uh, some quick wipes, and oh, man. I don't know. I would I would say a good like suede eraser too. Mm. Those those come True. in clutch. Oh yes, yep. especially in the uh, week long uh, fake spring that we get. Very good for that. Yeah, those four season days. Exactly. Yeah. Question number fifteen: Apple Music or Spotify? Apple Music. Good. So you weren't down all day. I heard Spotify was down all day, and I was like, oh, can't relate. <laughs> Apparently, no one could get into Spotify all day. I had... Yeah, that's what I heard. A couple people yeah. were like, "I can't listen to music." Well, sucks to be you, sorry, Oops. bro. Sucks. I don't understand how you have an iPhone and you have Spotify. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like you using Safari on an Android. That doesn't make sense. And yeah, it's like using Safari at all. But like, let's not get into, let's not get into that. facts. Facts. Let's not get into that. Question number sixteen: What did you have for breakfast? Uh, protein bar. That's it. Healthy. That's it. Oh my god! I'm yeah. not. I'm not a big breakfast guy during the week. Like I can't because I just. I don't know. I just got too much to do in the morning. That's fair. Question number seventeen: What's a color that belongs on every shoe? Uh, I would say sail. Oh, great Ooh. answer! Fantastic answer. Question seventeen point one: Spell color. C O L O R. You're missing the U, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> question number eighteen: Sony or Canon? Uh, Sony. That's what I shoot with. Nice. Question number 19. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, I would say yes. It's in between two buns. Oh, my God. Don't talk to anyone from what, Chicago. What is happening yeah. on this podcast? It's all going to hell. This is never going to air. <laughs> <laughs> Question number 20. What is your number one grail? Hey. Uh, Union Black Toes. Mm. Like, I mean... They're they're like my all time. I have them, but so I guess they're technically not a grail if I have them. But still, yeah. that's that's an all time. A grail can you can own a grail? I think I don't know. I mean, that's a that's a different discussion. But all right, would you rather receive, for the sake of uh, argument, your number two grail or three other pairs from your top ten? Uh, probably three other pairs. Quantity. You got to fill up those non IKEA shelves, right? Yep. Exactly. Got to get my target money, you know, worth it. (laughs) (laughs) Lower the cost per space on each (laughs) show. All right. You did okay. You got a lot of them wrong, but it was fun. Um, All right. So before we get into a little bit more about current stuff, let's go back a little bit. And uh, what kind of got you into sneakers in the first place? What does your uh, sneaker story begin for you? Uh, Probably when I was a kid, um, I grew up in idaho so damn you know, we make fun Canada. of idaho all the time sorry hey that's fine as you should <laughs> i make fun of idaho too it's all good um so yeah i'm in i grew up in southern idaho and uh not like a huge area for like sneakers or anything but i love no playing way. basketball uh i mean we've got potatoes man that's, that's what we focus <laughs> on uh <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so growing up, I played a lot of basketball all through high school and stuff. And I mean, when you're playing basketball, you're always noticing what pros are wearing and what other people are wearing for shoes. Cause yep. you want to be like someone who's better than you. That's just kind of how it goes. So that was kind of where it all started. Uh, was just, you know, watching some of my favorite hoopers back in the day ball. Uh, but I say probably where it really started was probably like eighth or ninth grade, uh, basketball season watching, uh, watching my favorite player at that time, still one of my favorites, Kevin Garnett. Mm. Uh, when he was with and one, I don't know if you guys remember oh, that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like looking back at him now, his and one signature shoes are gross, <laughs> but like <laughs> yeah. as a, as a young kid seeing all that shiny, like whatever material they put on those things. Like I was like, wow, that's really great. <laughs> so that, that kind of got me, uh, 
into the whole shoe thing. So I tried to do everything I could to get those. And I think I ended up seeing them in like an East Bay magazine and dialing up the number, giving them a call and seeing if they have my size and <laughs> taking three weeks to ship them to Idaho. So that's, that's, uh, that's where it all started for me was, was back then with sports. You know who really wouldn't like those shiny Kevin Garnett <laughs> and ones? Ginger Same person tech, who doesn't like Ginger Jordan Techno 11. Viking would hate those. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger Techno Viking would hate those shiny end ones. Um, so, okay, all this time has passed now. You're still into sneakers. What's kind of keeping you into sneakers now? Obviously, the game is a lot different than uh, East Bay catalogs and uh, Kevin Garnett and ones. What's kind of keeping you in the game nowadays? Uh, you know, for a while there, it was like the nostalgia stuff. You know, as a kid, a lot of the Jordan releases that I really wanted to get, I wasn't able to get because we had this local terrible Foot Locker that was probably ran like Foot Lockers will be here in a few months. Um, <laughs> yes. So it was, it was, there wasn't anything there. So, uh, but when I got, you know, out of Idaho, out of high school and the internet, you know, started carrying more stock on shoes, I was able to get some. So that kind of carried me for a while, um, collecting like OGs, vintage Jordans and stuff like that that just kind of, you know, hit me as a, as a kid. But now I would say the thing that keeps me coming is uh, I'm a snob for like little tiny details. So materials, like I don't care who makes it. Um, you know, I mean, everyone loves Nike and Jordan, but if I see an Adidas or like a New Balance or even a Puma that has some amazing material, like some, some thick suede on there, like I'm, I'm a sucker for suede. So those, those little details and materials are, just keep me coming back. Love it. All right. So as we mentioned, you kind of wear many different hats, including the Supreme one you're wearing now. And one of those <laughs> is uh, photography. So what kind of got you started in uh, in photography? I know that you've, uh, as we mentioned, you've become infamous for literally taping shoes to walls. And like, honestly, the most genius thing ever. I won't even like front like it when you revealed that that's what you did. I was like this fucking jerk. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's what it. it was all along that's all it is <laughs> damn i was like thinking there's some photoshop master over here and he's like nope just some double-sided tape um but uh yeah what kind of got <laughs> you started in photography and then obviously was it was it sneakers did it transition to sneakers what's the story like there uh so story like growing up my dad was really big into photography i mean we'd go on like family trips all the time he'd always have his camera out to the point that it would really piss us off <laughs> Um, so I and never wanted anything dad. to do with it. Yeah. Now I'm that dad. And my kids are like, what the hell's wrong with you? Um, but they, uh, so that kind of carried over into kind of my liking of it. And I kind of got into photography in college, took a photography class and got some cheap little Sony that didn't have interchangeable lenses and just, you know, went ham with that thing and started doing like landscape stuff and, uh, just pictures of really anything that I wanted to. I just really liked the whole aspect of just like capturing something that you know a unique angle that no one else has really like done before with something so that kind of got me into photography and then transitioning into sneakers uh kind of happened because as my wife and i had kids we weren't able to get out as much and like take as many pictures of places we would go so i still wanted to do photography and i was like okay i like shoes and i see all these people doing cool stuff on instagram so i was like i want to try to do that too and I just started taking pictures of my sneakers uh, at first, just to like document it, just so that I had a picture of every one of my shoes. Um, you know, it's, I I don't know if you guys seen the the show Dexter. You know the show Dexter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like his little like slide things and like oh, all of yeah, his yeah, yeah. you know his victims. I was like, that's what it's like for me with shoes. You're comparing. Swear. Sorry. <laughs> Pause. Yes, yes, I am. You're comparing a catalog of people that a Man. serial killer murdered. And... It's, a t it's a TV show, okay? Sure. <laughs> but no, it's like Anyways. you have your little catalog. Yeah. Anyway, I got into photography because I like murder. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, serial kin killer yeah, so... tendencies, no big deal. <laughs> yeah. So it just started like I had uh, the place we were living at the time I had unfinished basement and i just started taking pictures of all my shoes in the same spot the same setup just so i could have a catalog of all of my shoes and uh then i was like okay those are cool but then i wanted to try like new and different things see people doing like the cool like floating shots and all of that and tried to figure out how they would do that so just really curiosity um 
beyond just normal photography just kind of drew me into sneakers and trying to replicate some cool things that i'd seen before is that kind of where like so they kind of go hand in hand with like wanting to start the uh sneaker instagram then was it kind of like chicken and egg where it's like i'm going to be taking these pictures of sneakers i might as well post them somewhere was that kind of how it started yeah that's kind of how it started and kind of so i started on my personal instagram just doing like a story every day of what i was wearing on my feet just you know typical like you know take a picture at the top of your feet with your phone and uh then people are like well i don't even know what kind of shoes those are so i started taking pictures from the side with my phone and then people started liking that a little bit on my personal account so i was like you know i'm just gonna create my own account so i'm gonna keep my personal account for that stuff and not bombard it with shoes so then it just kind of naturally flowed into what it is and then you started doing all the reels and when did when did you start taping shoes to walls when when did that start <laughs> <laughs> uh at first honestly that's how i thought that people like made like those cool like floating Floaty scenes ones, yeah. like they, they got they got to tape it to something and then like photoshop <laughs> out some things so that's that's kind of how that started and then uh not gonna lie when i first started buying double-sided tape there may or may not have been a few like casualties on the inside of a shoe oh, um man. so i didn't even think of I that some, i was I, thinking of the the paint on the walls not even the sneaker damn you can replace that, the that, paint that, that too that's true. that too yeah you can paint over it but yeah there is there may or may not have been some, uh, so before we moved into our current house, we lived in an apartment, there may or may not have been some paint casualties all over the walls <laughs> in there, but do it for the gram. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I always thought that people just taped their stuff in positions that they wanted. And then I would do like combination of like tape and string and then do some Photoshop stuff. But yeah, I found some better double-sided tape. It's not like industrial strength that <laughs> will never come off anything. Oh, man. Yeah, you would think that would be the first thing you would think of is like, will this uh, ruin anything? And you were like, well, I try. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm going to store my sneakers. They're going to be stuck to the wall. Uh, so I first tried like just normal like packing tape, uh, but that wasn't uh, strong enough. And then I tried, yeah. I was like, duct, duct tape's going to be too strong. So then I tried, just went to, you know, grocery store and paroused the tape aisle and found some double-sided tape but it was like the strongest stuff ever so yeah i've uh i've gotten my my taste of double-sided tape down big double-sided tape connoisseur over here i was <laughs> mostly impressed that your grocery store has a whole aisle for tape that's insane wow it's it's tape walmart you know the office mm. supplies there okay fair enough well, not as exciting yeah. as i once imagined yeah. um <laughs> Any like long-term goals with this whole like Instagram thing? I know you've become like super active. Obviously your account has grown a lot in a year's time and got got a lot of attention. Any like long-term goals? Are you going to like quit being a teacher, pull a Michael Jordan and say, I'm not even going to say it. Um, and um, like move on to just full-time <laughs> Instagram um, influencer. Like what? I know exactly what <laughs> you said. Sorry, I'm dying at that Michael Jordan comment. <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny, because uh, another teacher and I say that all the time to each other, like, hey, MJ, MJ, just happens. So I know exactly what you're saying. Will Will you uh, say the MJ line and become a full-time sneaker uh, Instagram content creator? The world wants to know. You know, I, I don't know. I don't really have, like, any huge goals with it, just trying to keep it still, like, fun because i feel like if it turns to something that's not fun if it starts turning into work mm -hmm. then uh it's not going to be enjoyable and then i feel like anytime creativity gets turned into work sometimes the creativity goes down so i'm just going to keep doing my thing i enjoy teaching too so it would it would take a lot for me to want to want to leave the teaching world that's fair so so on that kind of wavelength there with teaching What's it kind of like being like, I know you've posted there's another teacher or two at your school who's kind of into sneakers, but like, what's it kind of like being the teacher who likes shoes? Like, does it kind of like create that unique relationship with the students? Are they into it? Are you like the Sean Collard where it's like, these are actually the uh, 1982 blah, 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 blah. And or are you like the pulling up in like the unions and they're like, whoa, this guy is super sick. Uh, so I like Sean. I've connected with Sean on Instagram. Great dude. Someone I'm, like I'm not Sean. quite. I'm not quite the the historian that Sean is, and I appreciate his knowledge for that. But I'm. I don't know. I I just like to wear everything, and like kids, 
it's it's a fun connection piece because like day one like first day of school like this year i wore my blue to- or my royal blue unions nice and kids are like Jeez. what and uh so i was like yeah i like shoes and then like it just it breaks down those barriers yep. instantly yeah. you know okay. with kids because uh I don't know. I felt like as a kid, I could never relate. Maybe you guys are the same. Like, could never relate with any of my teachers at all because they just seemed like these old, like yeah, you just imagine them as humans. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't know how to dress. Like, they had no, no. drip. Like, none. Yeah. It's like sweater vest, all day and shit. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sweater vest with pleated khakis and <laughs> yeah. you know, like the braided <laughs> leather belt. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. A little too much detail, but like, I. <laughs> I, I couldn't relate with my teachers and like, I don't know, maybe it's our generation thing. Like I don't really feel like I'm as old as I am. And I still yeah. like love keeping up with things that I've loved keeping up with as a kid. So, and it, and it it's, it works well in the classroom because kids who normally I don't think would be able to be reached for any given reason. Like I feel like I'm able to connect with them in some way whatsoever so that they can trust me a little bit more as their teacher and, you know, have a good positive relationship there. Part of that too, I think, is like, like you said, kind of the generation thing. I feel like, yeah. in a very good way, the teaching, like, it's almost like I would attribute it to like golf or even like regular, like professional settings where it's like, if you worked anywhere in an office, it was like a suit and tie. And the same time yeah. where you had the teacher with the braided leather belt, right? So, like, <laughs> everything has kind of like gotten more casual and it's like, you're not. Yeah a bad teacher or you can you can't not teach because you're wearing sneakers as opposed to dress shoes right so definitely a lot of it right. is attributed to that because like you said as a kid you're growing up and you imagine all these teachers as literal dinosaurs like wearing foam runners yeah. like super old literal dinosaurs and all of a sudden now when you grow up and you're like 30s whatever you're like oh teachers are my age <laughs> like teachers are yeah, not yeah. all 80 years old <laughs> like my <laughs> friends are teachers and i'm like oh, okay they're not like I, it, obviously it's when you're a kid everyone seems like they're a million years old but like definitely the right. casual sense of wearing sneakers and that connection like definitely would help with the like leveling almost where it doesn't feel like you're on this plateau even though you're showing up in storm blue unions it's like you're still like <laughs> One to one. Are there like specific kids who are like extra impressed and that are like trying to like show out because they know that you know like you're with the shits? Like oh, gonna, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So we're we're on a block schedule. So we have like A day classes and B day classes. Got so it. I see my students every other day. Yeah. But like I'll see some of my kids in the halls on the days that I don't have them, and the days that I don't have them, I'll see some of those kids that are like super into shoes. They'll wear you know nothing crazy, just some normal shoe. But then when they show up to my class, they're like. They're trying to, you know, Flex show everything that they stuff, have. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the time. And I think it's great. You know, kids love it all the time. And I always try to comment, compliment them on it, too, because, like, that builds their confidence up as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, seeing seeing what they have. Even, like, some kid walking. Like, I'm not a Jordan 1 mid guy. But, like, some kid comes in flexing his Jordan 1 mids and thinks they're great. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support them in that, you know? Absolutely. And, like, coming from, again, like, coming from that position, like, not every kid one is going to have the means of buying fucking right. Travis Scott's, yeah. but two is not going to well, yeah. like, want that shoe, right? Like they're going to think like they went to Full Locker, picked these out, they're super cool, and then all of a sudden like the quote unquote cool teacher, big air quotes there, um, is, is like complimenting <laughs> Thanks. me. Thanks for that. <laughs> had to, I, no one can see it, so I had to let people know. Um, <laughs> the cool teacher is complimenting me on my sneakers. Like it's going to make them feel good, right? Like whether you think they're sick or not, you can, like it's just about self esteem, right? Like, do you notice that with kids? Right. Like the sneakers is one of those like self esteem things. Oh, absolutely. I mean, not every kid because there's there's some kids that don't care. Yeah. I mean, just like there's people who don't care about you know our age that don't care yeah. about sneakers, but you know you can tell that kids take a lot of pride in what they wear uh, at that, at that age in middle school. So any, any source of confidence that you can, uh, give them is, is huge for them, especially when it comes from a teacher. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, their friends will say something, you know, and that that's great and stuff. But if an adult figure in their life says something compliments them than that, I mean, imagine like you as a kid and one of your like teachers is like, Oh, I really like that. That looks really good. Exactly. Even if like you don't really care pants. for the teacher. Yeah. I like your pleated pants. Yeah. <laughs> now pleated pants are cool. So I mean, full circle. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's 100 percent true have like have your kids started to uh notice or like comment because like 
you had like your feature on the sneakers app. Very cute. Very cool. We don't have the sneakers app, so I couldn't watch it, but I'm assuming it was very nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you've been right, starting to you. get the, the traction on, on Instagram. Again, you were featured on sneakers, et cetera. Have students like comments and be like, Hey, Oh, Mr. Dutton, I saw you on the Nike app the other day. Like, does that happen? And yeah. if it does, like, oh, yeah. are you like soup? I would be like incredibly awkward. Like, Oh yeah, that was me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's weird. Cause it was like, it was so like, I'm, I'm not one to know how to take compliments. It's like, mm, yeah, Oh, that same. was so cool to see you on the sneakers app. And that was awesome. Like, thanks. That's <laughs> yeah. It was, it was fun. Uh, so like, yeah, kids like came in at like random times too. like during lunch was like, how'd you get on the sneakers app? I was like, well, you know, it just kind of happened. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, kids, and then, uh, what was it? I got an email from like another teacher that I don't know, like super great at my school. Um, so I was like, why is she emailing me? And I look in there and read the email and it's like, yeah, my son is, uh, looks on the sneakers app. She said she, he saw you on the sneakers app. And I was like, and I thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, geez, thanks. Damn, you're that teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. I mean, again, breaking down the boundaries of like being relatable as a teacher and like an adult figure in these kids' lives. Like you can't really get more relatable than like, yeah, I was on the Nike app. That's kind of cool. And they're like, <laughs> that is kind of cool. Um, someone who probably thinks it's not that cool, your wife. And then obviously by uh, <laughs> association, your kids, are you like, push not pushing but are you like trying to introduce you have two kids if i'm not mistaken are you yep. trying to to push them into not put again not push uh introduce them into sneak on the, you're gonna like this shoe um you will like this yeah. smell this shoe this is an amm1 do you know how much <laughs> these cost like are you trying to introduce them into sneakers or are you just kind of let them are they liking it because you like it like what's the situation with the kids and sneakers yeah, I think like, I mean, as a kid anyway, like you always kind of, you know, look up to your, your parents in some way or another, and you kind of gravitate towards their interests because that's kind of, they kind of like drag you in without like you really even knowing it. Cause they kind of have yeah. to, right. Cause you know, you got to supervise your kids and take care of your kids, but they're going to, you know, be around you when you do things that you like. And uh, yeah, so my kids, they, they really didn't like start like my oldest, he's seven and he's like obsessed with shoes now. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I know like he'll, he'll come downstairs in the basement and he'll be like, dad, tell me about these shoes. Tell me that's about these cool. shoes. It's like, so I think that's great. Like not like coerced at all. He just wants to go and learn about that stuff. And I awesome. think it all started with, uh, I think it was not this last Christmas, but the Christmas before. So 2020, uh, we started our a family tradition of getting everybody matching shoes for Christmas. Um, and so we did all that, you know, and then this last year we did it again and we got two pairs this year because I wanted to be extra. I don't know why. I don't think I'm going to up the number every year because right. by the time they're older, it's like, I'm not getting you 20 pairs for Christmas. And I'm they're, sorry. when they're adult <laughs> sizes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get them when you're in, you know, the little kids. Size. Exactly. Yeah. Once you're out of preschool. Manageable. Yeah. No more. <laughs> sorry. You're on your own. You, you can buy me shoes at yeah. that point. Um, <laughs> but I think that kind of started, uh, at least my oldest interest in, in shoes that way. Uh, because he's like, Oh, dad has those shoes and I have those shoes. And, uh, well, speaking of my oldest, he just walked down to the basement right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I think that really got him into those seeing that dad has those shoes and then I have those shoes. So I think that's really cool. And then now my youngest who's three, like he always, his favorite shoe right now, we got cool gray 11s nice. uh, nice. for Christmas this last year. And he's like, I was like, Emerson, uh, let's put these on. He's like, no, I'm going to wear my cool grays. It's like, Damn. all right, we'll wear your cool grays. They're beat, but you know, <laughs> who cares? He's three. Um, so it's, it's, it's been pretty fun seeing them get into it as well. How does wifey feel about all this? How does she feel about the non Ikea shelves filled with sneakers? <laughs> is she like, I mean, I'm assuming you guys have been together for a while since, uh, you know, you have a seven and a three year old together. So what are, right. what are her feelings on this ex very expensive passion of yours? She's like, as long as uh, you are financially responsible, it's not a problem. And I go, yeah, um, I'm, I'm with you. Little does she know. <laughs> little <laughs> does she know. Secret credit cards, no. I'm <laughs> um, but like, yeah, she's she's supportive of it. Um, she's not like super into it. Like every now and then, I'll try to, you know, get her into. It. I don't think she'll ever be like, you know, super, a sneakerhead yeah. to the point where she's like 
stressing out over releases and complaining yeah. over bot protection and you know stuff like that <laughs> but uh but like i'll i'll pick up some pairs for her that she that she wants and she's appreciative of those things but let's just say she won't be getting her own set of non-ikea shelves anytime soon <laughs> let's hope not um <laughs> one last question that i just thought of and it's a cool one to kind of round it out and i don't even know if you've ever even thought about this um i'm sure you have would you want to teach your own kids like if they came to your school, first of all, would you want them to go to sc- the school that you teach at? And if they did, would you, would you want, I know he's there, so he's listening and he's going to be like, hold it against <laughs> you forever. But <laughs> It's coming up here. So yeah, we're good. <laughs> um, would you, would you want to teach them if like, if they had the opportunity to be in your class, would you want that? So it's funny you ask that like, Hey Adler, do you want me to be your teacher sometime? He says, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I've, I've asked him cause he knows like they come to my school all the time. Like mm-hmm. if my wife's dropping off like lunch or something, you know, they'll come in want to hang out. So they know like that environment. And my oldest is like, I want to go to your school with you, dad. I want, I want to be a student in your class. And I'm going to tell all the kids to be quiet when you're talking. I was like, <laughs> okay, that'll work well, out we'll really well. How, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes, uh, for you and for me. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, right now in a sense of youth, right? Like they want to, they want to be everywhere yeah. that dad is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can maintain that close relationship as they get older. Um, but I would love to have them in class. Um, I think it would be fun. I had, so little story about me, my mom taught at the high school I went to nice. good things and bad things about that. Yeah. Um, so I took her class cause she was the foods teacher. Mm. and uh because of course i took that class because food right and uh i thought my mom would be a little bit easier on my grading but no really uh yeah no she was she was harsh (laughs) um but uh i i enjoyed uh being in class with my mom i didn't think it was awkward or weird and i'd try to like razz her a little bit instead of calling her mrs and i'd be like mom mom <laughs> i was gonna ask like did you like publicize it but i guess that answers the question <laughs> oh yeah all the time all the time i was like mom and she's like nope mrs dutton in this environment i was like okay Damn. sorry mom that must have been weird calling your mom by her yeah mrs yeah her last, that's yeah that's str- oh i don't like that at all yeah how it, can it was she a weird give dynamic. you bad grades in your a cooking class though like that's one of those things that you're like mom that's a life skill that you were supposed to teach me like you're basically <laughs> failing yourself right now <laughs> she wouldn't give me bad grades she's a little more critical of like, the it, things yeah. that i was doing compared to everyone's like my, my mac and cheese looks like their mac and cheese why am i getting a bad grade on my mac and cheese facts my apple you know? pie and cheese looks the exact same as everyone <laughs> exactly <else. laughs> sorry i used too much sharp cheddar on the top mom gosh yeah you used cream cheese and she said no sharp <laughs> cheddar only <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy. Well, this was super fun. We appreciate you coming out. Um, this was awesome. Again, uh, apple pie and cheese on us when we come visit Utah next year <laughs> yes. for All Star Weekend. Um, that's all we've got for this week. So wherever you guys are taking in this episode, please leave a comment, review, follow, and or subscribe. Make sure to check out CanadaGotSold.ca to shop the latest CGS merch and peep the YouTube for our latest videos. And don't forget to check out CGS Talk on Facebook to chop it up with us. Do not forget to use hashtag CanadaGotSold on Instagram for a feature. I have been Lawrence Hopkins, and you can find me at L Doggy Styles on Instagram. Woof. My name is Alvin Quincy, and you can find me at M I S T E R Q and then Mart. Andy, one more time, where can they find you? And my name is Andy Dutton, and you can find me on Instagram at A D underscore sneaks. That's correct. And thank you for listening to us talk about sneakers for 197 episodes. Please remember to rock your kicks. This has been True to Size. We have been CGS and Andy Dutton, and we are out. Hey. No pineapple on pizza? Really? No, I can't, man. Like it's, It's just not... I don't like the sweetness on the pizza. You but just you'll said, dip your fries yeah, in the, sweet and salty. Blurry. You just said, I know, but that's different. That's different. It's not because the <laughs> McFlurry and the fries are kind of both soggy already, so it works. <laughs> so is pizza and pineapple. <laughs> but that's like no, I can't. I'm sorry. Man, that's a shame. My only gripe. Yeah. First of all, I don't know if you knew this, but. Uh, Hawaiian pizza was invented by a Canadian. Obviously, anytime that comes up, we need to mention it. Second of all, <laughs> on like 
pizza ordering apps and stuff, the pineapple is under the vegetable section. And that's just so weird. Yes, it is. It's so that weird. That is weird. Yeah. I know that's... it doesn't make sense to have a whole fruit section for one. Yeah, topping, that's the only fruit. But like, it's just like maybe other, I don't know. It's just weird. Like, just don't call it the vegetable section. Is all I would yeah, say. Yeah, no. <laughs> unless, unless you're going to include like some apples and oranges and stuff on your pizza too. Just, but... just maybe even just for the section. Like, you don't have to actually have, like, no, you know, no one's going to order it. But like, just have it so you can fill out the section and have a fruit section. I don't know. Anyways. Or, or, and then say oranges are out of stock. Exactly. Yeah, we should, you <laughs> should never have. <laughs> they're just forcing you to pineapple. That's what they're trying to do. Mm. That's what Canadians do. We force people to pineapple. 